Hi everybody, Jamie the Board Game Man, and today's vintage game is from the year 1973. It is by Milton Bradley. It's two to four players. It is Shoot 5. Now in this game, it's a strategy dice game from the makers of Yahtzee. It's very, very similar to Yahtzee, but the scoring is a little different. And you also have this very cool contraption where you drop the dice down and it lands into the landing area. And of course, you have the three rolls to try to get your score. And what's really cool is these are the little scoring tracks here, which I think is really awesome. And this is how you keep the score. So let's head on over to the gamer's table, where I'm going to show you how to play Shoot 5. everybody here we are at the gaming table and here is shoot five let me go ahead and go over the components of the game first of all you have the rolling area you have this really cool contraption right here where you drop down the dice and what they do is you just kind of squeeze this together and there's like little uh, things down here you just kind of squeeze it in and it goes right on in you also have this the four scoreboards there's four of these that come in the game you also have the instruction booklet you also come with the five little tiny dice and then you also have, let me go ahead and break out the box over here. You have these that go on top of these. And then you also have these little rings that count as zeros. When you don't course, score somewhere, you would place a zero on there. And that's pretty much it on the components of the game. Let's go ahead and show you how to start one game. Like I said, it's a two to four player game. So when you first start the game, we're going to go ahead and take these, I don't know what you want to call these things, these little lever things, whatever. And you're going to place them on the top like this. Okay. There's little grooves right here. So what you do is these little grooves will go into these grooves on the side. So what you're going to do is you're going to place it just like this to start off the game. That way you're blocking the scores and they slide up and down. Okay. Let's see. Let's go with, uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and grab a few of these. And you're going to go ahead and place these just like so on top. That way the grooves sit right on top. That way all the scores are covered. Okay, now I'll show you a couple rounds how this works. Now if you know Yahtzee, you're pretty much going to know how to play this game. Which I think is probably about 99.9% .9 of you watching right now are probably big Yahtzee fans and know exactly how Yahtzee works. Where you have up to three rolls to try to get your score that you're trying to score. If you're able to score, then you get those points. If you don't, then you have to zero out one of the areas that you did not score yet in okay here we go okay so this is how it's going to start off with you'll be covering all the scores on the bottom just like so okay so that's how it's going to look when you start the game now what you're trying to do is obviously you're trying to get the highest score wins the game now in this game like in yahtzee what you would do is where you would throw the three dice or the five dice three up to three times and however many of that single number you got that's how what your score was well in this case that is not the case okay you do have your ones through sixes okay you do have that but you have to score at least three of them in order to get the first score on the bottom if you get four or more of them then obviously you would go to the higher one and you get the highest score let's go ahead and show you so we're going to go ahead and roll these in here oh, wow just right off the bat i got three fives that is good you can put your fives right in here okay I'm just going to go ahead and keep going because i got two more rolls. Let's see. Oh, no five there. Roll it again. And we got no more fives. Okay. So, I scored three fives. That is the bare minimum you have to score in order to get the bottom score. So, what you're going to do is you're going to take the fives and you're going to bring it one notch. So, I got five points for those fives. Now, let's just say I had rolled another five. Say I rolled four fives. Then what would happen is I would bring up the second notch and then I would end up scoring seven points and that's how many points I would get for the fives that goes for any of the one through sixes if you score three or more or I'm sorry if you score three then you get the four if you score four or more then you get the six obviously if you get five then that's obviously that's called a shoot five and that's a Yahtzee in this game but instead of calling it Yahtzee they call it a shoot five and if you did that then you'd get the 20 points for getting the Yahtzee which of course Yahtzee is 50 but in this game, it is 20 if you get five of a kind. Now, the other ones are self-explanatory down here. Three of a kind, you would just get the one set of points. Obviously, these don't have any. You need three or four because it is what it is. 
Four of a kind, you would get it up to five points if you get a full house up here. Small straight, same exact thing in Yahtzee. You get four in a row. You would get seven points for that. A break. A break is kind of like the chance, all right? But in chance in Yahtzee, you just add up all five dice. And in this game, a break is chance, but you must have 20 points or over. See, the total of your dice must be 20 or over in order to get those points. You just can't go, oh, let me add up all five, and that's how much I get. Nope, not in this game. All these, all these points are standard, so there is no up or down, higher or lower than what shows on here. So if you were to get 20 or more on your dice, then you would get 8 points. A large straight is 5 in a sequence, obviously. You would get 9 points for that. And like I already showed you earlier, a shoot 5 is a big 20 points, which in this game, as you can tell, is pretty big. Now, if you manage to score 21 or more points up here, which is similar to what in your regular Yahtzee, I think it's what, 63, I think it is, 62 or 63 in the regular Yahtzee, you get 35 bonus points. Well, in this game, say you were kind of scoring away up here, and you got this, and you scored, let's say we got like this, if you score 21 or more points on the top half, then you get a 10-point bonus. So once you get 21 or more, you can go ahead and raise that up, and you'll get 10 points. And at the end of the game, whoever scores the most points in the game wins. Now, in this game, if you roll and you do not satisfy any of these, say you were trying for the, the fours and you just didn't roll any fours, then what you would do is you would take one of these rings, which looks just like this, looks like a little Cheerio, and you place it right there. That tells you that you scored zero points. <laughs> that is the zero. So I just wanted to let you know about that too. So that just like in regular Yahtzee, you got to zero one out. If you don't, if you can't score anywhere, you have to sacrifice one of those, those areas. Well, it's the same in this game. If you couldn't roll any fours in this instance, then you put a little zero there, and that's what those little rings are for, is for a zero. And that, my friends, is shoot five. Now what's cool too, is say you had a player on this side. There's a little flap down here. You just flip it over this way. And that way, when you roll the dice, it goes over to this side. So that's pretty cool that they have this little flap. So depending on what side the players are rolling the dice from, you can put it towards yourself. And there you have it. So there's nothing much to it, because like I said, if you played Yahtzee, you really know the you know the logistics of the game. All it really is is the scoring is a lot different on it. And like I said, you have you need at least three in a row up here to get the bottom score. If you roll four, then obviously you get that. Now, obviously, if you roll... Um, Say you already had five in a row, and then you had this. Well, obviously, you could put it towards an area that you have not scored yet, obviously. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. That is shoot five. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And now let me head on over to the game room, and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so my final thoughts on shoot five. Well, you know what? It's a pretty cool little game. I like that it's a little offshoot of Yahtzee. Um, I, I love Yahtzee. You know, you got to love the little contraption they have, the roll of the dice, that you just throw in the dice in there. They go, oh, let's make it a little more fun. Let's just have a little contraption and drop the dice in there. Eh, that's pretty cool. And then you have a little flap on the bottom where if your player's on the other side, you just flip it to the other side. And it rolls to him or her on their side. So that's pretty nice. Um, I like the similarities with the scoring. I can kind of slide the little things up and down, which is cool. Um, also, you know, you got the, if you score 21 points on the top, you get a bonus 10 points. Where in the original Yahtzee, was it 63 points, I believe? You get at least 63, then you get the 35 bonus points. <clears throat> so a lot less scoring in this one, I mean, point-wise, because obviously everything's a lot lower. Um, but I do like that, you know, if you roll three of a kind, that you get, you knock it up one notch. And then if you get four or more of a kind, then you knock it up to the second notch. Eh, that's pretty cool. That's very different. Um, I also think it's kind of funny, the little rings with that, you know, it's like, okay, I got to put a zero down. So the little rings are zero. So that's kind of funny. So you go, okay, there's my zero. Um, but yeah, if you want something a little different than Yahtzee, like your normal Yahtzee game, um, this is a good little offshoot of it, like I said. Um, of course, you also have Kismet, which is another game that I have not shown as of yet. Uh, I'll probably do an episode on that soon, where that's kind of very similar to Yahtzee 2, but it has colored dice too, so that one is plays a little differently as well. But for a vintage game, I think that's a really, it's a really cool game. I think it's really fun. I'm probably not going to keep it in my collection, um, just because I have a lot of other, like I said, uh, different versions of Yahtzee in my collection of Kismet, all those other ones. I'll probably be more likely playing those than this. 
I would really like to, you know, I'm going to probably turn this in for credit at good old McKay's down the street here. And, and just kind of try to upgrade some some games that I know I'll be playing more often than Shoot 5. I probably will not be playing it, but I'm not going to say anything else bad about it because there's nothing bad about the game. I just, you know, I mean, I, I just don't feel that I would be playing this game more than I would be playing the Yahtzee and the other games that I have of the other uh, variations of Yahtzee in my, in my collection. So, but I will give it a thumbs up just because it is just like Yahtzee and it's from the makers of Yahtzee. So, um, you, you can't go wrong there. Can't go wrong there. So anyhow, well, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think about Shoot 5 and uh, whether you have it or don't have it or never even heard of it. Um, if you're not a subscriber, I hope you feel free to hit that subscribe button. I really love to have you as a subscriber. And until next time, everybody, thanks again for watching. And as always, happy gaming.